Okay, chicken or the egg. Does infertility cause anxiety or does anxiety cause infertility? Jen Graff is a licensed clinical social worker with a private psychotherapy practice in Tenafly, New Jersey. She has certifications in mind-body medicine, imago couples therapy, and positive psychology. Her husband and her have named the Graff Center for Integrative Medicine at Englewood Hospital and Medical Center, where she is on the advisory board, the chair for its annual fundraiser, and where she leads stress management programs caregiver and nurses programs, and teaches meditation and relaxation techniques. She is also a Reiki master and is currently engaged in a yoga teaching certification program because she clearly does not have enough to do. <laughs> Meet my friend, Jen Graff. Hi, Jen. Hi. Thank you for coming. I invited you here as a psychotherapist because I wanted to get your point of view from a very cognitive standpoint. Um, using very traditional methods for helping couples go through fertility treatments. But your practice is not typical. And you infuse so much of the Eastern practices such as Reiki and meditation into your psychotherapy practice. So tell me, why was that important for you to be able to incorporate both? Um, well, for me personally, in my own personal life, I found that mind-body medicine helped me link cognitive behavioral therapy with um, more of a meditation kind of uh, practice. So it was kind of like East meets West. So, and they're evidence-based practices. So uh, studies show that it decreases blood pressure, decreases uh, heart rate improves mood, improves our autoimmune system, um, makes us happier mm -hmm. um, as well as healthier. So mind and body exist as one. They're not one or the other. And it's hard to be happy in our head if we're not happy in our body and vice versa. So body work and mind work go, to, go together for me. Okay. You mentioned healing the mind and body at the same time. I feel that relaxation and anti-anxiety techniques are so important for anybody going through fertility treatments. I know some of the tactics that I use for my clients, but I would love to know if I came into your office, how do you help your clients with anxiety? When they walk into your office and say, I'm doing IVF, I'm freaking out, it doesn't work, how do you help your clients? So um, everyone's different, right? So they come in and they've got their own stories, they've got their own histories, they've got their own ideas about what it means to be pregnant. And um, so we look at the whole person. We look at what they're eating, what they're saying to themselves, who they're hanging out with, <clears throat> the conversations they're having, the doctors they're seeing. And then we, uh, we craft a plan based out of what it is they want to accomplish. So maybe writing exercises will have them focus on what they want to create. Um, drawing exercises are uh, great expressive exercises that get um, blockages unstuck. And um, movement exercises, sometimes we do a little gentle movement exercises to get areas of the body unstuck. Sometimes if we say, oh, I'll never get pregnant, it gets stuck in the shoulders mm. um, or in the hips. And moving that around sometimes mobilizes our emotions so that we get unstuck and make room for baby. So um, does that make sense? Yes, but when you said like you feel it in your shoulder, explain that to me. So I can't get pregnant, how would I feel that in my shoulder? Well, it's not a direct correlation. I can't get pregnant. I feel it in my shoulder. But we notice that when we do these certain movements, um, they're kind of uncontrolled body movements, uh, we feel areas of stuckness. And it doesn't okay. have to be the shoulder. It could be, the, it could be anywhere in the body. Um, but we notice where there's stuckness. And where there's stuckness, we give we give extra special attention to. And in doing that, we find that we feel an emotional and physical release. It's not just physical. It. It's that mind-body connection. Yes, unblocking 
the yeah. stuckness. I'm unblocking the stuckness. And then once we kind of clear out those energies, those patterns of um, unsupportive dialogue that go on mm -hmm. in our head or monologue that goes on in our head, then we can start writing what it is that we're really committed to again, kind of like with a fresh start. And we can do some journaling. Sometimes just talking it out is a beautiful thing. Sometimes drawing it out is a beautiful thing. Sometimes I'll see somebody with their partner and they can combine stories together so that they can really weave a beautiful story about what they want to create in their lives together. So that it's not just her doing all the work, which mm -hmm. it can sometimes feel like. Right. You touched on the couples doing things together to create more balance with the IVF journey. And this is something that I work a lot with my clients on is the resentment of the imbalance. So tell me, what is something that the male partner can do to help balance out the efforts during the IVF journey so that it's not just all on the woman? Well, certainly he can, if he wants to seek counseling, kind of distinguish for himself what might be the underlying um, internal conversations he's having with himself that are kind of throwing roadblocks in that he might not be conscious of. So that he has full ownership in this in this project. Mm -hmm. We're going to call it a project. It is. Yeah. And um, certainly he can go to doctor's appointments um, he can listen to his spouse, you know, just to, to listen without having any judgment or feedback, just to kind of mirror what you hear your partner saying is a terrific gift that we can give each other. And so if the man can just listen to his, his partner's feelings about, you know, being stuck and prodded and, you know, mm -hmm. pulled in every direction, that would be a tremendous gift. Um, and also to create this journey with his with his spouse um, through writing or, um, you know, some people uh, create mood boards, mm -hmm. vision boards where, and I, I, you know, I do that with my clients all the time where they just create this universe that didn't exist before with pictures that we just pull from magazines or the internet. Yeah, I like that idea of having you and your partner do that together. And, and I was... I was at fault for, you know, you mentioned talking to your partner and I think it's really important to say to the woman, you have to talk to your partner about mm -hmm. this and not take it as a project that's just for you, um, which so many of us mm -hmm. <laughs> did. Where I was like, I don't, I don't right. need you. I don't need anybody. I just need to get this done. Let's stop wasting our time. But that also, I think, created blocks um, in me and my mind and also in our relationship mm -hmm. because he wasn't involved, but I didn't allow him to be involved. So mm -hmm. I think the woman also has to take ownership on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that women who actually go for, um, you know, fertilitites who are, you know, going to have a baby come mm -hmm. hell or high water are, you know, they might have control issues and um, it's hard to give up that control. It's hard to share that control, especially with your partner, right. um, who, you know, has a say in the matter, mm -hmm. I think, um, and can actually help the process more than just donating sperm. Right. right. Yes, I, I needed you. I needed you three years ago. <laughs> okay, chicken or the egg. Does infertility cause anxiety or does anxiety cause infertility? Well, I think that um, it is chicken and eggy. And uh, if we're having fertility issues, then we do get anxious. And then the more anxious we are, the more we're having fertility issues. So how do we break this cycle? So one thing we could do is um, meditate. So simple meditation, breath work, closing our eyes, just concentrating on our breathing has us perceive the world a little differently and with practice and it does take practice uh, meditation is a, a practice yes. um, that we can get a little we can we can get, gain a little distance from you know getting pregnant we have to get pregnant we have to get pregnant so taking the edge off of that urge to get pregnant um, movement certainly yoga helps with um, anxiety in the body and in the mind, uh, body work. So Reiki, massage, acupuncture, all of the, 
all of those things are useful in reducing stress and increasing the body's immune system and making the home a more comfortable place for baby. You know, a right. baby's not going to want to plant itself in a stressed out environment. It's too acidic. Mm -hmm. So when we practice these mind-body techniques, we do actually reduce the acidity in the body, and they've done studies on this. So we are actually increasing our chances of getting pregnant when we do mind-body techniques. Okay, so in general, is the need for IVF increasing because our anxiety in society is increasing? Um, certainly, I mean, I think that food has a lot to do with it. I think, you know, that, you know, the plastics in the environment, the food that's been modified, all play a part in it. Um, our, our grandparents didn't have to deal with this kind of stuff. We see a rise in illness and cancer. Um, but stress has been around for as long as there's been animals. It's the fight or flight mechanism that is thousands and thousands and thousands of years old that keeps us alive, that has mm -hmm. us um, run from the tiger when we're in danger. Um, so stress has always been a part of our lives. Um, today we're not running from tigers, but we're not getting pregnant, and that's our perceived threat. Mm -hmm. And so we still perceive it as a life-threatening situation when it's not. So we have to modify our thinking and, and um, lower our cortisol levels and take a deep breath and um, recontextualize the situation. It's not a life or death situation for us. Mm -hmm. It is a life situation. Um, did I answer your question? Yes, and that's all about telling the mind you're gonna be okay. It's not a life or death situation but then being able to work on your mind to ease your body and those blocks yeah. that will happen. Yeah. And, and do you feel that, because I tell my fertilitites to get off social media. Mm. I, I tell them to get off blogs and, to, and I tell mm -hmm. them to get off social media. Um, the comparing, I mean, for two different reasons. The blogs, they're comparing their numbers, their beta numbers, their FSH numbers to everybody else. How many eggs were retrieved? And I don't think that that's helpful mm -hmm. for them at all. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of Facebook and social media, I feel like that adds to their anxiety. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, it can, absolutely. And especially if we become obsessive about what other people are doing and how other people are living their lives. And, oh, look, they just had a baby. Why can't I? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Social media can be a terrific source of information and give people a sense of connectedness um, and community. So I think it's a wonderful tool. But when we use it to compare ourselves, it falls, you know, falls short for us. Right. And, and I also do feel, and this is no fault to anybody, but people don't realize uh, what other people are going through in lives. So they get, they put out these messages on social media that are all happy and great. And, you know, the person who just had a miscarriage is sitting there dying inside and really, really angry all of a sudden mm. at their friend. Mm. Is it right for somebody going through fertility treatments to unfriend somebody or decide that they don't want to continue a friendship because what they're going through and their friend not understanding it? Well, I think that we need to focus on what we want to achieve, which is fertility, um, and then look to hang out with people who support that. Um, and if they have wins in life, if they got pregnant before you did, we need to figure out a way to celebrate their happiness and know that it doesn't mean we're not gonna have ours. Um, you know, there's just, there's a, there's abundance in the world in terms of fertility and, um, your friend gets pregnant, you'll get pregnant. We need to be happy for each other. Okay. I need therapy. <laughs> As you know, <laughs> something that I have an in, it, it can only be described as an internal tantrum over is when I'm talking to one of my fertilitites and she tells me that her husband won't get tested 
because it's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Or um, he has a varicocele, which is just like a varicose vein in, in his scrotum and he won't get it fixed, which is a very simple procedure of, and I know you know this, but for those that don't, it's a very simple procedure of just injecting salt water into the vein and it collapses. So when I hear that, because I know what the woman has to go through, not only before IVF, but during IVF and then pregnancy and then after pregnancy when things are falling out of everything, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I like, I internally go, I keep it together as we speak, mm -hmm. but I internally go crazy. So tell me so about the these wife, men. The wives or the, you know, the female partners who are yeah. suffering physically with every poke and prod and their spouse doesn't want to have a varicocele or right. have their sperm examined. So, so why, what is behind that? Because do they not know what the woman, like, do I, I'll do it. Do I need to point out to them all that they're going to have to go through? Or is it more mental than that about don't touch my junk? Like, what is that about? So, I mean, again, everyone is individual. Every man is individual. There might be some trauma that he's experienced in the past, physical or emotional or mental trauma around that. Um, that's not been uncovered, that maybe it could be discovered in therapy. Um, there's also social stigma sometimes attached to, you know, a man not being able to impregnate his wife or his spouse. Um, so that needs to be explored and debunked, you know. And maybe, maybe the man feels pressured by his partner to have a baby and maybe he's feeling a little ambivalent about having a baby. Mm -hmm. So to uncover these kind of mysteries in therapy are useful. Okay. So if somebody walked into your office and they just had a miscarriage, would your protocol to help them get through that change versus just needing fertility treatments? Well, certainly someone who's just had a miscarriage is probably experiencing some level of grief. And it's different, again, with everyone. Um, some women experience several miscarriages and just know in their gut that they're going to get pregnant again. And other women come in having just had one miscarriage and feel like it's the end of the world, that they'll never get pregnant again. So um, to respect that grieving process, to encourage the the woman to feel the emotions you know a lot of the times we're just trying to hold it together and and be cool and be great for everyone else that's a time when we really need to take care of ourselves and respect our own grieving process our sadness any feelings of um, loss to be able to share that with our partner um to really take the time to grieve so that, and, and again, movement exercises, drawing exercises, journaling, body work, being touched, being massaged, acupuncture, Reiki, um, just anything to help move along the stagnation of feeling so that we can create a, a clean canvas again, once again, to kind of refresh ourselves. But to, it takes time. Mm -hmm. And to respect that that time, to honor that time. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, we worked with the with the same person, and you were great with giving her tools to not only um, cope in the immediate, but how to move on, because she really had a hard time. Um, I, you know, she it was. She yeah, I mean, really she was. Time. she's like a happy person, mm -hmm. you know, she's bubbly, she's sunshine. Right. And so for her to feel sad is mysterious to her. She didn't know what was happening. She thought she got hit by a train. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, but it's a growing opportunity. And so she is moving through her grief uh, with the help of her husband, who's a lovely guy, and her family, she's got a very supportive family. Um, you know, to be able to share that with our close few um, who we trust and to ask for help when we need it. You know, those of us who are 
women who are usually bubbly and, and not bubbly. We don't ask for help. We try mm -hmm. to do it all ourselves. This is a time when we need to start asking for help. Mm -hmm. And be okay with being sad because it is sad. And try yeah. not to push that aside. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us today on FUTV. And thank you, Jen Graff, for joining us today. So Jen, please tell my fertilitites how they can find you and work with you. My private practice is in Tenafly, New Jersey. And, um, but you could find me on my website, jennifergraff.net. We also have the Graf Center for Integrative Medicine at Englewood Hospital. There I teach stress management programs, uh, guided imagery, and meditation. And there's yoga, Reiki, massage. We have a functional medicine doctor, nutrition, essential oils, anything that you might, acupuncture, anything that you might like to treat your whole body and mind to help you get pregnant.